Hello and welcome back to Real Board Lectures. My name is Austin and we will be doing board two. So for today, I have the second game of five from the Portland tournament that I partook of at the beginning of October. Um, this one I played against a three dawn AGA ranking again. And for this one, I played as black. I forgot to mention that for the timing, um, yes, it is one hour for main time plus five periods of 30 seconds. But what I didn't mention is that is the Comey. The Comey is either 7.5 or just half a point. In the previous game, it was a seven and a half Comey. So, in case you tried looking at the counting of the last game, I do apologize. There, were white as as white, I had um, seven and a half points for Comey. For this game, I will just put it out right now. White has half a point Comey, um, and and I'm playing as white, black. Um, against the three Don, who is um, white, with half point Comey. All right, and this one I also got onto my phone, and it was definitely an interesting game. Oh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it too, I do want to explain the other thing about AGA rules. Um, AGA rules being the main time and the overtime, like I already mentioned, but also the passing. So let's say that the game is over, and Black was the last one to play a stone. Um, for Dame. For AGA rules, you also have to fill in the Dame. And let's say it's White's turn, and White wants to pass. What White does is give a stone to black <laughs> and then black gives a stone to white and white gives a stone to black let me get that stone so the reasoning for this is white needs to be the one to play last since black is the one to play first so, if black plays and white wants to pass, white has to give up a stone, black give up a stone, white give up a stone. This one, white will have played last. Which is why in the end, white wants to play last, because when white plays last, black has to pass, and black will give white one stone, white give black one stone. And that's it. So simply, if Dame is even a whole point um, for that reason. All right. <coughs> so I also hope that the lighting is much better for you guys. And I would be sitting on across from how you're perceiving the board but that's where my lighting is um, probably later on when I do more videos I'll have figured out another way for lighting or have moved the light to a different location and hopefully that will work out um, but for now I'm gonna stick to the side like I am right now so and and I'll be perceiving the board as is while well, you'll be seeing it sideways but that's okay um so all right so again i am black ranked aga one dawn for the tournament against three dawn aga for the second game so we go ahead and just go for the corners no biggie I go ahead and do the 3-4, like I always do, because I love going for the Kobayashi, or if White does something, I'll just go ahead and 
play here, but I don't I don't usually play here anymore. I just play the Kobayashi. Um See, I'm going to switch hands. White plays the same thing. And if you know me by now, I, whenever someone does this mirroring of the 3-4 and the 4-4 four, four stone, I always approach the stone. I always do. It's just a habit of mine. I mean, I don't want to just come down here because then he could just do the same thing as well. I want to be first to get rid of the potential of him doing something over there. Um, but you don't have to. It's just what I do. Um, so yeah, I do go there. Maybe I should go there instead. Um, but for this game, I went ahead and played there. Um, White does a high pincer. I don't disagree with it. Although it I just feel like it is kind of weird, but in a way, it it just changes the perspective of the board. Um, so I then go for the wall Joseki. Well, yeah, wall Joseki, where white plays here, black, white, black, white jumps, black, extend, white. Black, white, honey, 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 double honey, extend out, protect the cut, and then possibly doing something out here. But after the tournament, well, after this game at least, a few of them did laugh um, because um, the player playing as white, he does a lot of crazy things. Um, he loves fighting. He doesn't like keeping things simple. So he went and did a different Joseki that I am not actually used to. Um, he goes ahead and cuts through. And we make a pinwheel. So uh, I... When this happened in the game, I was pretty annoyed. Pretty annoyed. <laughs> but, because, honestly, I've never played this in my life. Honestly. And, which is why I ended up messing up badly in this area. Even though I did manage to get some good moves out of it. Um, so, you'll, you'll see what I mean when I get there. So I go ahead and do this. This um, actually is one of the seven dons. I don't remember which one. Did take a look at this corner thing for me really quick and showed me my problem. Um, these were okay. Wait, let me double check before I just do weird things. Yeah, white pushes through. I block. White goes here. Now the proper move for black right now is to play out here. That is the proper move. However, I wasn't aware of that. Instead, I thought that I could keep attacking white and be able to cut something. But I did not look at it right. Quite honestly. So white pushes through. And now he's got four liberties, but then he plays here, and that changes everything. If White had played here, then yes, I would win the capture race. Because then I can connect. If he comes up here, I'll have four, he'll have four, but I get the first move. So I would be winning this capture race if he did that. But because he went here, that changes a lot of things. Um... And then I play here. Yeah. He descends. Now, here's the problem. I can't just simply put this in Atari. If I do, I'm going to be at a shortage of liberties. Well, first self Atari in there. And then Atari. Black connect. And then white block on the side. Now, there's absolutely no way for black to live in there. So that's 
definitely a problem. Definitely a problem. This is when did that chunk get stone get chipped? Oh well. <sighs> Alright, so then I went ahead and seeing that I went ahead and played there. But it probably wasn't the best move. Because then he just kept he kept going at me. He kept going and going. On and on about that. Um, I connected. Whoops. Try not to hit the board. The, not the board, the stand that my laptop's on. Um, and I do apologize if I seem a little weird. I've had a long day, but I won't go into that. So uh, White went ahead and uh, captured the group. So now I have a very badly shaped, stupid freaking group um i do a cut um so i can get some more moves in here um and he extends out i go ahead and play here now because now he can't haunt it if i hadn't played here and threatened that group then i wouldn't have been able to um he goes ahead and extends i push again because i can still haunt it here he prevents himself from running right in front of the bus. In short, haunt it. And goes ahead and jumps out here. Because now he's building up while still threatening. Although then I'm able to do a hane. He protects. I extend. He captures, cuts off the stone. And I protect the cut. So now I'm okay. My group is able to run out. Um, it's not the best position for black at all. And actually, I'll put my next move there too. Because that's huge. I don't want white playing an approach here or doing anything to get an even larger area. Um, so that's huge. Um, so now white's got that corner. At least one eye in here, so he can easily attack anything in the center for any potential I have there. His corner is building up quite nicely, and right now I've just got open side, very unknown territory over here, and maybe not even any points in there. At the most, maybe six. Um, and I still might have to run out. Um, and he says that I do need to uh, continue running out, and I could live locally. I could live locally, or I could keep running out. And because I know that I could probably live locally, I decided that I should play down here. Because I don't want his area to get way too big. That'd be, that would be very complicated for me to deal with. So I went ahead and did it, and what it also does is it allows me to um, connect to something if I do end up running out. Um, next, he plays here. The Seven Dawn mentioned that he should play here, and this is exactly what I was thinking. That, black, that white should just completely surround black, make black live in Gote and then attack this stone. Maybe a tight pincer. Because now, like, what's black going to do with this stone? It's going to be really hard to do anything. The best he can do is just live in the corner. Uh, but then white has all of this potential in the middle, so I'm, I'm like, when black just, white, when he just descends down, I'm just really confused. Um... And so I know that I probably can't live locally there anymore. Um, I mean, I guess I could do this, but it's not... Well, I could do this. That's what I meant. But still, I don't like it. That and it does allow 
um, him to do something out here. So I just play the um, diagonal. White blocks. I jump. He extends. And I play here. I try to be fancy with my connections, but please don't do this. Just connect here. It is much cleaner shape. Always stick to good shape. This eh. This eh. Because if white plays here, black can't play here to get a few points in there for endgame stuff. Because then white can threaten to go here, and if black protects, white can play here and have two ways to cut by having these two stones there. So it would definitely be better to play here because now it's okay for black to block off there. Um, after this, white says that he wants to prevent me from connecting while attacking the group, and that's okay. It works. Um, I go ahead and Hane. He does a double Hane, hoping to keep me from dis from connecting. I said, okay, that's fine. But first I'll threaten to completely split you in half. And he says, no, I don't want that to happen. So he extends up. However, then I'm able to connect up. So now I'm connected to my group. And this area... Well, okay. He plays here. And now this area is okay. It's um, at least 12 points currently. Maybe a max of... 21 points but now I've got some potential in this area I decided that I wanted to keep attacking these three stones now that they're cut off and weaker um, while being able to build up in here um, white played here the seven dawn did not agree with what I did he said I should just let him capture and play here and just surround him. Um, like this. Maybe not exactly like this, but similar. But I didn't like that. I mean, I tried reading it out, but I, I didn't like it. Not one bit. Okay, so it was here. White just did the Atari. So I go ahead and just connect. Just playing it safe. No, no big problem. And then he goes ahead and saves his two stones. And I go ahead and protect this cut as well. Now is when things get really tense. But now if you look at the board, now I've got a little bit of potential here to gain something down here. I've Same for that side, but I have no for sure points yet. While he's got a good possible 15 to 20 points there, and on that corner about 10 points. So, and he's got this influence for being able to reduce and invade anywhere. So I actually favor white right now, and white has Sente. Um, yeah. And now we get into the crazy stuff. So, uh, White goes ahead and threatens to cut off. So now this potential is greatly reduced. And then he plays an inward shoulder hit. And I go ahead and block from the top so I don't get disconnected. He extends to the side. I do a Hane. He does a Hane. 
Seven Dawn says I should just play here and keep him nice and low so I can get the wall. So it would be easier for me to be able to gain something or be able to attack something. Um, it would just be a lot nicer. But I th decided that I wanted to do a double Hane. Um, and then he also said that this was okay. He just preferred the other way because of what I had just mentioned. Um, but it's also because he still has a group to worry about. Um, black goes ahead and captures the stones. Black makes another threat, kind of like down here. Um, now, these kind of peeps I would agree with. Because they're peeps that threaten to kill a group, or to save things like those two stones. And it also reduces, like with this stone, it re greatly reduced Black's potential on this side. Um, same for up there, while white being able to build up a few more stones in there. So hap white should be happy with this, and I'm just worrying the pants off myself. Um, especially with this, because that's huge. My 4-4 four four stone is now in trouble. But what's fun is that I let him take it. I just w said, you know what, I'll pincer you, I'll gain some potential on the side. You can go ahead and take that. Bad news is that that corner is just too big. I should not have let that happen. What I should have done is play over here because his group is not alive. And because his group isn't alive, I should attack it. I can attack it to get some more stones out there. And if I can get some more stones in there, I have a better possibility of t attacking that stone. But no, I said that I wanted to play there and sacrifice the corner. And I went ahead and played here saying, I'm going to not let you invade or do anything. And he completely cuts that off and both the three dawn and the seven dawn said that white is now very happy after playing that move it's huge because that corner is now his he has three nice corners um and the comment that was mentioned earlier is that well earlier later after the game the comment is that I should have just went ahead and done something with that corner. Because that's just too big. Way too big for the game. I should have played there. But I said, being the Moyo person I am, that I wanted to build this area. And that, I thought, was much bigger. Because, yeah... I could play this. I was thinking about a move in here to reduce and get some possible Aji of saving that stone. But I felt like this was more urgent, even though I was wrong. That is way urgent. Way more urgent. I, at the time, had felt that building up is better. Me, being a huge Moyo person, and if you've seen previous videos, you know that I just love Moyo. I love it. <clears throat> So now we get into the fun stuff. The fun stuff. What attaches? And now I am worrying the crap out of myself. Because I wasn't exactly sure what to do. Because that stone being there, he has a good potential of getting at least one eye. And then being able to run out and possibly doing something. Um... So, for the time being, I told myself that I should at least build how I can with what I have. So, I did a Nobi. He pushes through. I block. He descends. I descend. Now, after that, he goes ahead and 
AAA is there as to threaten cutting off my group. I said, after taking a long time to think, no, I will threaten to cut you. Um, but he said, okay, go ahead, go try. I'll just first split you in half. Um, so he goes ahead and cuts me, and my group is now okay, and he protects himself. And I just further surround this area. So I was actually happy when this happened during the game. Um, so I don't want to take all of these stones off. Whatever. Um, let's see. See, that was there, that was there, that was there. Uh, this. Um, when white played here, I... I don't know, I feel like there was a better move that white could do. Like, maybe a large knight out to the side. Um, because white just really needs to run out. Um, and not get surrounded. Because getting surrounded is pretty big. For the... for black. I definitely would have thought that white should instead do something to the side. Instead of letting me threaten these stones and surround him. Or what he could have done is sacrifice these stones so he can run out. But that's still not a good idea either. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put these back. That stone was taken. That was there. I still have the dead stone, the captured stone over there. So no worries there. All right, and this is how it was. And here he also, once again, made an interesting move. I thought that he would do something out here, or at least right there, because this just seems too slow. Uh, I go ahead and say, okay, you can't run out without me being able to surround you, so I'm going to go ahead and attack any possible shape for eyes. Um, because he could possibly get at least one eye in there. And if he runs out, he may have a possibility of getting an eye. So I decided that I just wanted to do this. So he attaches above. And I clamp him. Took a lot of reading. Um, because I didn't, I definitely did not want this to happen and him getting this because then he's going to have a better chance for getting eyes. Prop, it's going to be better to play there then. I mean, then he can play here or here and get very close to two eyes. And I would not be happy with that. That was the first thing that came to mind when he played that attachment. So I went ahead and played here. And if he were to extend out, I could easily just come down here. No. What was I thinking? If he played there, I just descend. If he tried to surround me, I can poke around so he can't. escape easily and he will have lost an eye well first first here um yeah I mean even this idea is probably bad probably just stupid to me um I don't remember exactly what else I was thinking of when I played this. I don't know. Um, he eventually plays here because he wants that eye. And I'm 
that makes sense. I would definitely want to make sure that I have at least one eye. But when I play this Atari and he connects, then I can just connect and be okay. Um, and then he plays here, I descend down, and I'm okay. However, he does have Aji for this area later on. So right now, I'm really happy about this because now this is even bigger in case he does live. But his whole area, one eye only, and can only make another eye by running out, is completely surrounded. I am really happy about this. Um, but then he goes ahead and starts attacking even harder by... I keep hitting the laptop. I'm trying not to do that. He does the attachment so he can uh, threaten to cut while while using that threat to get a little better position in this area. And he plays the Tiger Mouth. Um, I first play here so he can't try doing anything funny with that. Probably not the best thing to do right now, but I felt it was best. Probably shouldn't have, though. Waste of liberty. Um, yeah, he connected. Then I played a Kaima to surround and prevent him from getting some eye shape. Then he does again another attachment. He's attaching everywhere. He's really fighting for that second eye. And just ever since this dawn to about here right now where it's my turn, we've used up maybe 20 minutes just for this area. Each, I think. Each. 20 minutes each. 10 to 20. And now I'm really thinking because I don't want him to play a move over here to get some potential of running out or getting that second eye. So after a lot of thinking, I decided to do a clamp again. This is really hard to read through. Not entirely sure as to how things could go through like this. I mean, this is really hard reading right here. Um, he descends. Because I, I can't cut through here. If I were to try cutting through here, um, then he could either capture those two stones or capture these four stones. Not something I can do. Um, so I went ahead and played here for that specific reason. But then he plays here. Now I can play here to cut through him. Now I can. But I didn't, because I was misreading things. I was thinking that he could play here. Um, after I push through to do something, but I'm now after the game. I'm just like, what was I thinking? This was so stupid. I should have just gone ahead and cut right away, but I didn't. Like I mentioned, I just played here. And when I did, he played here. So now, at this point, I'm thinking, oh! No, that that was still after the game. Here, I'm like, great, now he's got a possible... Now he's got an eye down here. So now I just need to try fighting. So I went ahead and played here. When he blocked off, I'm suddenly thinking, oh, <laughs> he didn't play here so I can not be captured. Um, but then I saw, finally, um, the bamboo as a Miai to cut him off. Um, after that, it just kept getting worse. <laughs> White realizes this, and continues trying to push through. So now I've got a bigger possibility of gaining something, and even if he were to live, I'd be gaining a lot on this side, 
possibly killing off this group or this group, one or the other, possibly both. Um, but if they were to live, I'd still have some stones out here for a wall, also to help with the reduction there. Which would be really big. Um, continuing, he cuts. Um, I go ahead and Atari from this side, so this side can keep the liberties. Um, after I push again, now he's attacking this group. Um, I attach. Now it's just a huge fight with this whole entire area. Well, technically it has been an, a, an attack the whole entire time, but it's more threatening. This is like the whole game now. Um, he plays here. I honestly am not entirely sure why. Um, unless it's for that Atari. But it... Um, I don't know. I mean, this group has six liberties right now. Five. Five liberties. So this area should be fine. Um, but I go ahead and play here to threaten cutting those stones off. He extends... Sorry, I keep hitting the laptop. I'm going to move to the side a little. Um, when he extends, I play a bamboo. Now, this is this is the wrong side. Definitely the wrong side. Um, however, afterwards, he plays here. When, honestly, I feel like he should have just done a Hane here. Because I can't really gain anything in there. And he could keep those stones alive. And he does keep those stones alive. Um, I go ahead and capture. And he protects. Excuse me. So now he doesn't have... So now I don't have that eye. Um, I go ahead and push through. Now, I can't try doing some fancy thing to surround him because I am short on liberties. If he plays there, I play there. He can easily just play here, Atari, and then Atari. So I can't suggest do that, which is why I just extend. He just extends and I just extend. Now, when white plays there, I play a stupid, stupid move. So, this is still a liberty chase right now. Like I still need another move up here to connect. Otherwise, it'll be a chase for the two groups. Um, this group isn't quite alive yet. Um, I can do some reductions... I'm, I'm just going over any possibilities I have right now. I could reduce here. I could try maybe playing here to attack those four stones. But of all places, I play here. Of all places. I mean, I could kill off these stones by playing here. This whole area would be mine. It would be all mine. But I didn't play here. And that was stupid of me. Um, that is just far too slow. It was a really dumb move. Really dumb. Um, so he goes ahead and does the Atari. Even though I should have either connected or come down here. Um, I do an extension. He peeps in through here, and I have to Atari on this side. He connects, and I connect. Now, when I was reading things, what White should be playing is this. Because now I am short on liberties. I have six liberties. Here he has six liberties. 
plus an extra one because of these two stones being here attacking these two stones. So I can't play here, he play here, and then me playing here. I can't do that. So he technically will have at least seven liberties right here. And I would be behind. There's nothing I would have been able to do. I mean, maybe I can get a few liberties out here or something. But I seriously doubt it. I seriously doubt it. Um, so what he plays here, I'm thrilled to be able to play here. Um, after that, he realizes that his group is dead. And the game continues. Even after that death. I was surprised. But... At the end, I wasn't as shocked as now. Um, he continues getting rid of the liberties. Um, he does the Atari... And I connect. And he does it again. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, then he... Well, then I... I say that I should at least get some Sente in there so I can... You know, just not... Yeah. I don't know. I felt like I was well ahead. Um... So I went ahead and it just extended out. Um, he kept me at, from connecting on, but that was still fine because I am still safe on liberties. Um, and he continues to just, just go on with the liberties, um, but he's still off by one liberty. Um, after that last Dame move, not Dame, why am I saying Dame? Um, after that last liberty, um, he goes and goes for the reducing of the corner. Um, no, I did not play that first. I played here because I wanted to threaten getting rid of his eyes in the area. Um, after that, did he Atari? No, no. Wait. Yes, he Atari's after this. Did I play that right? Yeah, white, black, okay. So white plays there for the Atari, and I connect. And he d takes Sente for threatening the corner. Now, I wasn't sure if I could play here and be able to capture his group. I did not think I could. But later he plays there um, for me safety measures. And I probably would too. Um, I mean, maybe. Um, but right now I wasn't sure. At that time I wasn't sure. Um, so. Um, so with the Sente that White had, White went to finally play this move and do some threats for disconnecting me. At this point, it's still pretty close. Um, I will let you know right... No, I'll mention it later. At the end. Um, white fills in that. I feel like at the end of the middle game, I just kind of ramble on about pointless things. <laughs> Um, but I hope to fix that. I hope to fix that. Um, just after, um, the complete surrounding and the capturing of this group, I didn't really have anything else to, um, mention about that, um, other than this diagonal and not connecting. Um, but yeah, I'll work on that. I'll work on that. Um, so, yeah, the last move he plays is there. So I now play here, because now I can threaten to play here and cut this group off or this group off, or reduce. 
my original plan is that he would connect here so I can reduce. But he didn't want the reducing to happen. So I went ahead and played in here to cut off him. Um, he decides to, to keep that group, and I play here. I definitely should have played here. If he saved those stones, great. But I could have definitely played here because I'm threatening that whole group if I were to play here. Definitely. Um, but no, I didn't. And it's Sente for me to play there. Um, but no, I didn't. Um, did he Atari that? No. Yeah, he atari at that point, and I took these stones. And then just the rest of this is basically end game. Nothing too big. Well, actually, this is big. This is big. Um. He threatens that. He plays here for protecting the corner. I extend. He protects that side. And then, because of that, I decided that I should play here. Yeah, just boring end game stuff. But you do want to keep track of points and territory when it comes to the end game. I'm making it sound boring, but honestly, it is a huge thing. Um, Black played that last. When White plays here, I decide that I should take a bigger, more senteish move um, beforehand. So I decide that I will play the Atari on the bottom. And he takes the three stones. And then I come back for um, keeping that stone for myself. He plays there. And I, once again, just keep on going with the reducing. Um, he protects that, takes that stone. When I push here, he plays here. I decided that I did not need to respond to that because this is still Sente. Because it's still Sente, I can do that peacefully and then be able to capture those two stones. Oh, shut up, phone. I know you're at 15%. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, just Sente stuff. All of the Sente stuff at the end. All over the place. Um black, white, black. And then he pushes up. Atari, not Atari. Honey, block, protect. Honey, block, Atari. Oops. Um, block, reduce, block. I definitely should have played here first, but I didn't. I played there. Um, he took the move there. I block, he Atari's. For more reduction. And I just do that. And now we're getting back into what I had mentioned before with the AGA rules. About filling in the DOME. Um, I filled in the CO. And then we go into the DOME. So he... yeah. Good old Dame. And again, I am black. Um, so white plays the last move. And the end result... Drumroll. 
I don't have the sound effect for that. Um, is Black wins by six and a half points. Um, because since White played last, Black gives up a stone, White gives up a stone. Actually, we could just do it like this. So, yeah. Because th this whole group is dead. Um, and I'll go ahead and put the captured stones on as well. Um, quite a few captured stones in this game. I'll try to keep it separate from the rest of the board so you can see which ones are the captured ones. And to make things easier, I'll also move these. I definitely thought that after capturing that group, I would be farther ahead in points. So I was surprised to see that I only won by six and a half points. Um, so yeah, and again, the Komi was only half a point. But after looking at the board, I was able to see that was my only big territory. Well, he had that side, he's got two good corners. And that's that. Um, hopefully, as I do more of these, I'll be a little more enthusiastic and more descriptive about things. Um, but I have played online for a majority of my go life. Not very often that I've played in person. Um, I've gone to no more than 10 club meets as of right now in the last two years. Um, last year I only went to two due to lack of transportation. But this year, the last month or two, has been very active with going to the club. And then I also played in person for the tournament. Um, this tournament. So, with more experience of playing on a board, I should be more fluent as I play place some stones on the, the board for you guys to see. And to go over some more different ideas. So, with that, and so I don't blab on anymore, I will leave it at that. So, thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something from this, and I will see you next time. Later!